<laughs> okay hello everybody and welcome back to the rough as rats podcast with me Maisie last night I watched the England versus France football game all I'll say is get me on that pitch I've got anger issues that could see me through that entire what was it 100 minutes I could do it I don't know <laughs> But last night I watched that game. Where was I going with that? I literally have no idea where I was going with that. But anyway, I watched the game, got into my first ever pub argument, which, don't ask, don't ask. Um, Some guy called me a three out of ten. I said, you and you fucking lie, mate. I am not a three. I've got makeup on. I'm definitely not a three. <laughs> anyway. Oh, I was going to say, I want to get a football top made with my last name on it because I'm so obsessed with my own name like I was saying the other day when I get married I don't think I'll change my last name like completely maybe I'll do like a double barrel but Fuller means so much to me I love my last name I love being Fuller so maybe maybe in the near future you'll see me with a a football top on with uh, Fuller on the back just I can imagine (coughs) sorry (coughs) I'm so glad this doesn't have smell vision because I just stink of salt and vinegar hula hoops. Anyway, <laughs> I just imagine me running around that pitch or maybe a fast walk. Fucking running. Oh, just just make it a smaller pitch. Do you know what I mean? Like you'd cut that time in half all this bloody dilly dallying, beating around the bush, just fucking boot it in the goal. Um, I say that. Um, if you say that in a in an English pub when England are playing, that's a death sentence. Wow. Good job, boys. You know what? We may not have won the World Cup, but majority of you, you're very good looking. So you're always going to have a place in this world. <laughs> And today I've woken up to like every single thirst trap under the sun. Some of Gareth Southgate. What? <laughs> he kind of get it though. Anyway, speaking of kind of getting it, <laughs> today's episode is about getting it. It's about sexuality, first time, self-acceptance, all that jazz. Um, On my phone, I have like a notes page full of all the different titles in terms of like topics i want to talk about um and this was one of them also i just have to say if you are watching this episode as opposed to just listening i am so sorry last night i was going to film the podcast but you know footy called and i went out to watch the game i actually am a bit of a football hooligan and i hate harry Maguire. (laughs) every time i saw him on the screen i just got so angry He's just the most miserable looking person ever. Okay, sorry, this is a formal apology to Harry Maguire. You're probably already in the trenches, you know, handed a boarding pass as you walk off of the pitch. So I'm sorry I said I hate you. Um, You're just, I don't know you personally. It's just, you just, and then I saw a bloody thirst trap of him and I thought, oh, fuck off. But you know what? Sorry, Harry, I'm sure you're probably not as miserable as you fucking seem. Well, you might be now, (laughs) fucking hell. Anyway, I was going to film this podcast last night, had a whole face of slap on, all the makeup, I actually looked pretty decent. Um, and obviously then I went out and I didn't want to film it when I got back because, oh my God, I'm so gassy from drinking Dr. Pepper and not from my ass, just from my mouth. Um, when I went out, my eye was really hurting. Like every time I blinked, it felt bruised, and I've woken up with two styes. Uh, not what I wanted. And I've also got like a bump on my head from where I'm so bad at just picking spots that aren't even there already yet. So now it's just a huge bump. Anyway, all that aside, yeah, let's get into the podcast. Also, I want to be a football commentator. Me and Ian Wright would get along so well. Is that his name? Because Sterling got put on last night and everyone was like, oh, I don't like Sterling, a bit of a wanker. And I was like, oh, I don't really know. And then I was like, wait, what's his first name? Ian. And then as soon as I said it, I was like, you fucking idiot. That is the guy from Love Island. <laughs> Tonight, a brand new bombshell enters Sevilla. Do, 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 do. Wait, that was the X Factor. Yeah. That's a quick rundown of my my take on the England versus France game. And you know what? I pulled France in a football sweepstakes. So I did, you know, 30 quid is 30 quid. But at the end of the day, as soon as it was on 2-1, I put my feelings and my and the money on my mind aside. And I thought, come on, England. And then they came on nothing. Anyway, 
<laughs> Sorry if you're watching this podcast because I look like fucking ass. Um, but if you're just listening, consider yourself lucky. Anyway, let's get into it. So I've written down, like every time, I've written down some notes, some bases I want to cover because I don't know. Obviously, now in the current climate in the in the 21st sench sexuality anything like that it's it's quite a big deal sexuality pronouns gender all of that like it's a big deal because you know rightfully so it's part of your identity and like it can be fucking confusing and for me like off the bat i just put it out there i identify as she her and if i was to put my sexuality on paper i'd probably say straight because i'm scared but if i was being honest <laughs> I'd say bisexual because it's it's hard to put it down because it feels very official and like sorry I'm not ashamed of who I am or what I identify as or who I like and who I don't um but people really do hype it up to be way bigger than it is and I'm quite a firm believer that like it doesn't matter who you are where you come from what you like what you don't it doesn't matter. It's not a big deal to me anyway. Um, But I, I think everyone should feel that way because then things like coming out and sort of facing who you are would be way easier. But obviously in the world we live in, that's not how it is. And it sucks ass. It sucks major ass. But um, yeah, like I think growing up, I knew that I sort of was attracted See, even talking about it, it feels so weird because I don't really talk talk about it. Um, you know, when you grow up, people are like, what was your bi awakening? Mine was Una from the Saturdays in the Just Can't Get Enough cover for Red Nose Day. Yeah, try top that. You won't. You won't. You know, I kissed a girl and I liked it. And those feelings, I do think I just sort of suppressed them because I was just like, Maybe I just want to be her. Maybe I'm just jealous. Also, when you're six, you're not really sure what bisexual or lesbian means. I didn't even know there was a word for a woman who is gay until I was in like year six, year seven. And someone was like, lesbian. And I was like, a lesbian? I thought you were American. You know, I didn't I didn't know because no one tells you until like because of. (laughs) I don't know what it's like now because obviously I'm not in school but like growing up gay was like the biggest insult like you're gay and people be like no I'm not no I'm not like I vividly remember one time in the changing rooms during school maybe in like year nine um I was getting changed and I think I was just like looking over at someone and some girl was like are you a lesbian and I was like no and I was like why would you say that and she was like because you're looking at her and I was like where am I supposed to fucking look at my webbed feet like I was just like looking around the changing rooms and then like it made me so conscious to get changed because obviously at that point I didn't really know what I was and wasn't into and then being accused of being a lesbian made it seem like a bad thing and like I tried you know, when you see these parenting videos on TikTok, you try and find like some peace and some faith in the fact that maybe the next generation of children will be way more forgiving and less brutal than the generation before. But, you know, people make out like it's such a bad thing, especially in school. Like we never, I never learned about anything like pride or like anything to do with sexuality in school. It's just not on their agenda the same way if it's not Christian, it's not on their agenda to teach you about it really, unless you purposely take RS. But I feel like then it's still quite like overpowered by Christianity, which I'm not saying is a bad thing to learn about, but it's also good to learn about more than one religion, more than one faith. Same way it's nice to learn about different sexualities. We're not all fucking straight. You know, as Nicki Minaj said, used to be bi, but now I'm just hetero. That is my worst nightmare. (laughs) But like things like sexuality coming out, anything like that, they're made into a huge deal when really they shouldn't be. And no person should be scared to come out and talk about their true feelings, how they actually feel. And like, I think 
as well doesn't help with like stigmas and stereotypes online like coming out as bi is scary because some people oh my god girls when you tell them you're bi and they're like oh so do you fancy me and I'm like no babe I wouldn't touch you with a 10 foot pole um it is fucking scary like I don't know if people are going to change their opinion on you and like it feels like will this change who I am like by actually talking about it but it shouldn't feel like that it shouldn't be a huge deal it should just be the same as saying you like anything like why is it a big deal that it's about a person or about a gender like it doesn't it doesn't matter and like obviously sexuality itself is a spectrum like there are so many different sexualities you can identify as I definitely couldn't name all of them but there's no need for labels as well like they do really try and push the whole label thing and like the way I tried to sort of tell my mum that I thought I was bi was um you know the census that they send around all the houses my mum was like oh Maisie I've done the census and I've popped that you're straight and I was like oh yeah uh, maybe maybe I'm bi just like <laughs> and then I was like try- I was like laughing it off and she was like <laughs> okay that's funny and I was like yeah I'm straight because <laughs> the thing is my mum wouldn't care I don't think it would change the way she fe- like it wouldn't change the way she feels about me I don't think if I bought a boy or a girl or someone that doesn't identify as either home I don't think she'd mind because my mum isn't a prick um she's she's very understanding and like she's seen me through my last boyfriend I think she just likes someone that's nice and doesn't hit me now (laughs) so (laughs) it is it can feel big it can feel like a big deal it feels like things will change and maybe people's opinions will change of you if that's the case if someone has a negative reaction to you coming out or telling them something then genuinely I don't think people like that are worth any time um luckily I didn't really have any negative reactions I haven't really publicly ever been like I'm bi until now like I've mentioned it briefly but like I've never done a whole like do you remember like circa 2014 where every youtuber would like make a video being like we need to talk and it would be them saying that they're either gay or lesbian or bi or whatever I never really had a moment where I was like I'm bi because I didn't really feel like I needed to like I didn't need everyone to know like if I wanted to tell someone I would and if I didn't want to tell them I wouldn't like it was like that but like I said I think stigmas and stereotypes online don't help you know it's the stigma and the stereotype and this sort of like idea around um lesbians or bisexual women you know they it is fetishized is that how you say it fetishized fetishite fet- fetish you know it's fetishized fetishized fetished fetishized i don't know how you say it it's fetish sized (laughs) a lot like you know oh you're bi like let's have a threesome or oh you like girls yeah that's hot yeah like can i watch you having sex and it's like you're wearing a diamond earring right now get away from me um like lesbian sex everything around women loving women is just a bit icky especially with like alpha male straight men who just have all the audacity and absolutely zero grace and decorum it's it's shocking because they get fetishized and then men who love men are villainized like it's made to be this like unholy unnatural like disgusting thing and it's like fucking hell just let people be gay you know them stickers at school some people are gay get over it (laughs) like why do people care that much genuine question genuine question because like it doesn't affect you they're not having sex in front of you they're not bending each other over in front of you it doesn't matter like and like I just I don't I don't get it personally I don't understand why some people are so like shitty with it sadly obviously there are still people that are just so unaccepting and unwelcoming to anyone in the lgtv (laughs) the lgtv community like it's just it's shocking especially after seeing all the stuff with the world cup and like you go on facebook and people are like respect their religion respect their beliefs and it's like fucking hell people are getting killed for loving who they want to love and you're telling me to respect their religion no wear a fucking armband and get on with it like why and it's like just because you were born 
and you ident just because you identify as straight so you'll never have any repercussions for your sexuality doesn't mean you can speak on behalf of the people that do face repercussions because of their sexuality like why should people have to be scared to love someone they shouldn't it's so backwards and it's like fucking hell there's enough straight people to reproduce babies why does it matter why does it matter if people are gay it's the same as like people getting angry at men wearing makeup fuck off you're just like i just i genuinely don't get it but like think growing up obviously no one really talks about sort of like gay relationships or you know like you think about stuff like sex education not the not the hit tv show um the actual sex education you get even at school you never get taught about obviously safe gay sex you get taught about periods you get taught about i don't know do boys get taught about wanking like i don't know you get taught about your period and safe sex and condoms and stds you never get taught about you know safe gay sex and the risks behind having unprotected sex like it's like girls you'll have sex and you'll get pregnant and it's like well what if i'm if i'm scissoring do you know what i mean like and like if they did start teaching sex education with a whole part about gay sex then parents would be like you're pushing this agenda on my daughter or son and it's like no just let them decide for themselves it's good for people to know anyway even if you're not identifying as gay or lesbian or whatever yourself it's good to fucking know just in case you have friends who are gay or lesbian or any other sexuality because it's like it's always good to know these things it's like i'm not i may never need to use a defibrillator <laughs> why do i choose words i can't say i may never have to use a defibrillator but it doesn't mean it's not good for me to know how to use it it's the same as like i'm obviously not a gay man <laughs> but it's good for me to know the risks behind unprotected gay sex because if i had a gay friend who came to me and was like this has happened i could say well actually i do know about this because i'm not completely fucking unknowledgeable about gay sex as a topic like i think it's important you know you might not agree with me and that's fine everyone's allowed their opinion but like i do think you know it's not like just because you don't think about it just because you don't do it doesn't mean it doesn't happen like how do you say it guitar 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 <laughs> guitar i don't know how you say it but guitar wherever the world cup was hosted just because you have made being gay illegal doesn't mean it doesn't still happen doesn't mean people don't risk their lives to be with the people they love and it's like that's fucking noble that's noble to me and it's like why why is it a big big deal like growing up i didn't really have the realization that i was attracted to both men and women until i was a lot older because like all my first times were with boys like i think i had my first kiss at like 14 like year nine and it was literally just in my friend's back garden in a tent with this guy who kind of liked me and people were like oh my god your first kiss blah blah blah, blah. or like oh my god you've you're not a virgin you've had sex and it's like i don't think it's a big deal obviously like everyone has a different opinion on it some people want to wait until marriage to have sex some people have sex really really young some people have sex when they're 18 or in their 20s or in their 30s you shouldn't feel pressure to have sex but there should also be no pressure and no stress around the first time you do have sex i was 15 when i first had sex it was with my first ever like proper boyfriend um and it sort of just happened like oh like do you want to have sex and sort of like we did it it wasn't very good because most first times aren't it hurt a bit i only had one eyebrow painted on we did it i then went and had a shower we high-fived and it was over and it wasn't a big deal because like it was just two people that both decided they wanted to have sex and like me and my first boyfriend we were each other's first times so like it was sort of like oh cool like that's that's done now and then sex became a lot less of a tobacco a tobacco <laughs> a taboo because it was done 
but people at school were like oh my god you've had sex and it's like yeah and obviously you're quite excited at first but it wasn't anything crazy like I was just sort of like yeah and also like at this point you don't know really unless you've done like extensive research at the age of 15 I'd never watched porn before because like why would I I didn't even know that women could (laughs) masturbate I didn't know women could masturbate until I was like 18 genuinely didn't know that um and like I didn't realize what an orgasm actually was because like I didn't really orgasm during sex hello to any family members that might be listening to this but like I didn't until my third boyfriend which was my absolutely horrendous abusive one but before like other things would sort of get me there but sex never really did because I didn't know what I was into I didn't know what I liked and like I just thought that was normal and then when I met my third boyfriend obviously when he wasn't being an absolute piece of shit um well he always was being a piece of shit but when we had sex like he was cheating on me with every girl in North London so of course he sort of knew what to do and I was like oh my god like it was like good sex I guess would have been better if he didn't hit me but like you can't always have it all can you but like I didn't really know what I was into I didn't know what I liked and then after him I was single for two and a half years or almost three years actually and in that time I slept with I slept with a few people um and sort of each person you sleep with like you find out more what you like what you don't like you sort of set yourself some personal boundaries and like with first times or second times or the thousandth time you've had sex things can change things you're into can change kinks can change boundaries can change and you should never feel bad if you then don't want to have sex no one should ever make you feel bad for not wanting to have sex because you know sometimes you just don't want to do it I had the implant um, inserted in me like a month ago almost and it's really decreased my sex drive so anytime I even think about sex I'm like no that's okay and obviously women have to face the shitty side effects of contraception and like I remember I was sleeping with this guy once and he was like even if they made a male contraceptive he was like I wouldn't take it because like it's not the man's job to it's a woman's job and I was like oh also sort of like getting back in the kitchen and making you a sandwich I was like fucking get out the 40s get out the 40s you are 21 years old you're 21 and you're acting like that what and you know like for boys I think it's sort of normal you know masturbation and all that for girls they never talk about it And, like, I remember talking to someone about it and we both said how, like, when you think about female masturbation, like, it makes you feel a bit, like, dirty because you're a bit, like, no one ever talks about it. No one ever says that it's normal, which it obviously fucking is. I saw a girl the other day on TikTok that was, like, before I go to a party, I have a tactical wank so that I won't want to sleep with anyone there. And I thought, I like that. But, like, people make everything into such a big deal and it's just not like having a wank not a big deal sleeping with someone for the first time not a big deal finding out that you might actually like a different gender to what you thought you liked not a big deal so why do we continually feel like anything around any of those subjects is a huge deal when it's not it's not it is it is society that puts us on that sorry not to be oh we live in a society but we truly do and like you know it doesn't matter like oh my god I saw this thing as well this girl had two kids and then she had a girlfriend and someone was like well how did you have the kids then if you're a lesbian and it was like fuck me (laughs) people can change their minds people can you could be with a man for 40 years then break up and realize you're actually a lesbian because that happens you might have just believed that you were straight this whole time because being straight is what society pushes on you and it's like it doesn't matter and why does it affect anyone else it's all about how you feel if you're comfortable then that's all that matters and like going into sort of self-acceptance a bit it took me a long time to realize like what I'm into in the bedroom who I'm into, anything like that, it doesn't matter to anyone but me. As long as I am safe and happy 
and protected that's all that matters and like sex no matter what kink you're into you know there's some kinks that I just can't get behind they're not they're not for me or I hear people talking about them and I'm like ooh. like I heard I don't know if it was a porn star or whatever talking about a rape kink on TikTok um and people were like okay okay and like I personally can't get behind that but that's because if you have been like a victim of sexual assault or rape after experiencing that when I hear someone talk about it I'm like no I don't like it like I don't I don't think it's nice to fetishize something that is very very scary and awful and happens to way too many people but you know if it's two consenting adults and they actually listen to each other and they have boundaries and they have safety words and they have all that then it doesn't concern me what other people do in the bedroom doesn't concern me just because I don't personally like it doesn't mean it's not gonna happen do you know what I mean I you know having a rape in fucking quotation marks kink versus being a rapist obviously is two completely different things and I don't feel comfortable with a rape kink but like I said if it's two consenting adults then it's not up to me to say you shouldn't do that because that's not going to stop them you know the guy the guy or the girl you know they're not actually rapists I wouldn't let someone walk me on a lead like a dog but some people are into that and that's fine you know it's not and like someone being into a kink like a rape kink isn't taking away like when this woman was talking about it she wasn't praising rapists do you know what I mean like she wasn't saying that rape in itself is good she was just sort of saying consensual non-consensual sex is something she's into but it's like I no, I could never you know that's not a bit that's not something I enjoy but you know that doesn't mean no one enjoys it and obviously like they have they have their own sort of set of rules and boundaries for it and obviously when someone comes out and talks about it like not everyone that has an odd kink will come out and be like I'm into this but you know brave talking about it and like a lot of people in the comments were like oh I'm into it too and it's not like they're not taking away from the fact that rape is a disgusting awful crime that disgusting awful people commit they're not saying that it's not that they're just saying that they're into consensual non-consensual sex like that's what they're saying so like you know everyone's got a different thing that they're into and you know it's it's allowed you don't have to be into the same sex as everyone else like it'd be a bit boring if everyone was into the same thing you know some kinks are way more like drastic and intense than others but that's just like that's just sex isn't it sex is such a broad subject there's so many different things you can do with it like you know you can do (laughs) the possibilities are endless you know what I mean but like self-acceptance in sex is quite important because sex can feel like quite a dirty in quotation marks thing where you don't feel like that good in it whereas everyone deserves to feel good during sex and like having sex for the first time after like a bad relationship or like a sexual assault or anything like that it can be really daunting and really scary and put you in quite a hard place but like I think as long as you're doing it with someone you trust and there are boundaries in place and you both have a mutual understanding of the situation then sex can be enjoyable and it can be healing and it can heal that sort of relationship that you have with it because you're sort of reclaiming your power from it like it is hard don't get me wrong like afterwards being worried that they're gonna like overstep a line or not listen but it's like if you feel safe and comfortable then you should be able to do it without any hesitation but if there is hesitation and you don't want to do it that's fine as well like you don't have to feel pressure to do something you don't want to do even if you're like really in the mood and you really get into it and then as you're about to have sex you're like no I don't want to do it that doesn't matter and it doesn't matter and if a boy says oh you're gonna give me blue balls you are not a cow I do not need to milk you I don't care go and fucking lock yourself in the bathroom get the hub up and let one out that's not my responsibility to be your sort of sperm bank do it on your own time because you're allowed to change your mind same way a guy having sex with a girl or a guy having sex with a guy or a girl having sex with a 
girl, anyone in the equation is allowed to change their mind. Even if a guy goes home with a girl, he's really riled up, he's really excited, then he thinks I don't want to, that's allowed. Anyone is allowed to change their mind because sex is a very personal thing. It doesn't have to be. For me, it wasn't when I was sort of sleeping with guys that I wasn't in a relationship with. To me, it was just an exchanging of bodies. Like it was just like, oh, had sex, whatever. But for some people, it's quite personal. So you don't feel like you should don't feel like you should have to give it to someone if you don't want to. You're allowed to change your mind. Like I said, like there is nothing wrong with that. But yeah, um, I think that's everything I wanted to say on it. To be honest, like to sum it up, nothing is a big deal. You know, nothing. Nothing should be a huge deal when it comes to sex or gender or, you know, first time, sexuality. It's okay. And, like, even if the people who are immediate to you don't accept you or don't like who you are because of what you're into, there's always going to be people who do. There's always going to be a niche of people who might be into walking their partners around like a dog. There's always going to be other people who identify as the same sexuality that will welcome you with open arms. And you should never feel ashamed or embarrassed for who you are because you can't help who you are. As Lady Gaga said, you were born this way, baby. There is no shame. And being who you are should be celebrated. Every day you should celebrate that you're alive and it doesn't matter what you like or what you don't like you're still fucking human you know it doesn't it doesn't make you a bad person to be gay or to be straight (laughs) it doesn't make you a bad person to be gay or to be bi or to be pansexual or to be asexual or to be anything sexual or to be you know or to identify as any pronouns like it doesn't make you a bad person it just makes you a person and I hope you all know that no matter who you are or what you are, or who you identify as, or who you like, you are always welcome on the Maisie Fuller YouTube channel, or the Rough as Rats podcast, because, like, who the fuck am I to judge? I call myself a rat, I literally have no place to judge anyone else, but yeah, I hope this shared a bit of insight into sort of, like, some of my experiences, sexuality first times, you know, that sort of thing, you, and I hope I don't know. I hope it was in ent- I hope it was good. <laughs> and I hope you know that no matter what happens, nothing really matters. It's like when I fall over, when I slipped over on the ice in my ugly boots this morning. I'm on a floating rock. I'll die one day, like it's okay. And you don't want to look back on your life and think, I never accepted who I am because I was scared of this, this, that and the other. And it's so easy to say because obviously like some people's parents are so unaccepting and just nasty when it comes to anything with sexuality or whatever. But there will always be somewhere for you in the world, no matter who you are. And it doesn't matter if <coughs> and it's easy to think, oh no one's ever gonna love me because of this or whatever. But genuinely someone always will. And that someone is me. It's bloody me. I hope you enjoyed this episode it's been fun to talk about I do really like talking about topics like this because I I have a lot of opinions and I like talking about them (laughs) so episodes like this are really fun and it's like nice to talk about something that means a lot to me not just me but so many people um and yeah get out there into the big wide world yeah I hope you enjoyed this episode um if you did make sure to like it and subscribe if you're on youtube if you're on Spotify, make sure to give it a follow, rate it, five stars, Ooh, just said that, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed, um, I'll see you next week for the next episode, um, any updates on the podcast or the vlogs or whatever, always on my Instagram, which is at Maisie Fuller with two R's, but yeah, thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you all in the next episode. <laughs>